Okay, now we want to talk about neutralization reactions with an eye to titration, okay? So we often do titration with an acid and a base to work out the an unknown concentration of one of the two. Either we know the concentration of the acid and need to work out the concentration of the base, or we know the concentration of the base and need to work out the concentration of the acid. So that's what we use it for. And... Um, they are neutralization reactions, okay? If you mix an acid and a base, you get a salt and water. So the protons from the acid and the hydroxide ions from the base form water, and the ions that are left over form a salt. The other cations and anions form a salt, which is a metal cation and whatever other anion came from the acid. So now we've talked about how um, a strong acid and a weak base are going to give you an acidic salt and things like that. So we use this as the basis of choosing our indicators when we do titration. So we're going to look at how indicators work, and it's just another form of um, what you call it reactions, equilibrium reactions. So what happens with an indicator? Okay, We usually have an indicator. It's a weak acid, but it's usually uh, like an organic acid because a lot of the uh, weak acids are organic. So an indicator is a weak acid and it sits in equilibrium with its conjugate base, okay? But the color of the weak acid and its conjugate base are different. So what happens is, if you have the acid and water, it's one color. If you have protons and the indicator that has split up, can you see here? This is um, ionized, there's a bond here. This bond has been broken and you've ended up with a, a hydronium ion or a proton and the indicator as an ion, covalent, ionic, yes. So this is an equilibrium reaction. And then like say this is red and this is yellow. There's two different colors. And if the equilibrium is lying here, that nearly everything's covalent, then it's color one. And if it's ionized and the indicator's in the form of ions, it's color two. So then you know that um, something's happened here, you've changed your pH, okay? So look what happens here if we add an ACE, an ACE, if we add an acid, if we add protons or hydronium ions over here. Remember um, Le Chatelier, the system is going to try and remove whatever disturbance you've made. So if your disturbance is adding protons or hydronium ions, if you prefer to call them that, the moment you add more protons here, which is basically adding an acid, it's going to push the equilibrium this way to get rid of it, okay? So in an acidic environment, this will be color one. But if you add a base, the base and the proton forms water, okay? And then the moment you add a base, it starts taking out these protons and it makes water because an H plus and an OH minus makes you an H2O. And the moment you've got water, boom, you end up with color two, okay? So an acid gives you color one and a base gives you color two because it's removing these. So with this indicator thing, okay, Neutralization takes place when the acid and the base properties of the two solutions have been neutralized. And this is the end point of your titration. So the moment you've got the same number of moles of protons as you've got the same um, moles of hydroxide ions and the proton and the hydroxide ion have formed water, then the solution is neutralized, okay? And this is your end point and you've made a salt and water. So the protons and the hydroxide ions have given you the water, and you're left with the other ions which are in your salt. And this is at the end point. So this salt that you've formed depends on your acid and your base, okay? So the salt can be acidic or basic, which we discussed earlier. So the end point indicator for your titration has to be specific to the type of neutralization reaction you have. So a strong acid and a strong base, you use one indicator. A strong acid and a weak base, you use another indicator. And you actually have to know these indicators and which, which titrations you use them for, okay? So in the exam guidelines, methyl orange, bromothymol blue, and phenolphthalein are the three that you are supposed to know, hence the smiley face, okay? So methyl orange 
is orange in acid and yellow in base and it changes color between pH 3.1 and 4.4. So this is changing color at an acidic pH. So you use it for acidic salts when you titrate a strong acid with a weak base. Okay. Methyl red goes from red to yellow and its pH is like here 4.2 to 6.2 so this is closer to a um, this is a very acidic salt this is a more neutralish salt it's slightly less acidic and it's still with a strong acid and a weak base but if you were for instance going to titrate a strong acid and a strong base like hydrochloric acid and um, sodium hydroxide strong acid strong base the salt sodium chloride will have a pH of about 7 and so this changes pH between 6 and 7.8 it goes from yellow to blue it's called bromothymol blue and then this one you've seen phenolphthalein this goes from colorless to bright pink and it goes from colorless to bright pink at a pH 8.3 to 10 okay so you can see that this is an alkaline pH or a basic pH and you use it when you do a weak acid and a strong base so like for demonstration so not to waste chemicals so for demonstration when the um, when the school had open day I did this with vinegar I used vinegar as my weak acid because vinegar is like 15 rand for two liters in La Bamba and so and then I, I mixed it with sodium hydroxide so that I could use the phenolphthalein because this is a very nice startling color change weak acid strong base so here's what they actually look like okay here's the methyl orange with this orangey ready color okay Here's your bromothymol blue. Now this bromothymol blue, when it's actually neutral, it's this funny green color. So you can see at pH 6 it's yellow and at pH 7.6 it's blue. But right in the middle when it's exactly neutral, it's this funny green color. So there's not a lot of pH difference here. Okay. And here's phenolphthalein, which is colorless in acidic environments and pink in alkaline environments and if it goes much darker pink than this you have titrated too far and your teacher says mm hmm okay so in the past we talked about litmus paper and universal indicator they're not sensitive enough for titration but if you've got something that you haven't got a cooking clue what pH it is you can then figure out if it's an acid, an acid or a base or if it's a strong acid or a weak base especially with universal indicator which has got this whole color range from bright red to this very lovely dark purple and so um, we don't titrate with them because they've got this color range but once you've got something that you don't know what it is and your first test is to find its pH you just like to use your um, universal indicator paper because it's way way easier and that's where we're going to end now